Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's tale begins in the fabled city of New Orleans, where we meet Monica Rambeau, a member of the New Orleans Harbor Patrol. Monica was frustrated, having been passed over for captaincy time and time again in favor of men she saw as less qualified. Enraged by the ostensibly sexist policies of the old harbor master, Monica stormed off to her office where the elderly professor Andre Leclerc was waiting for her. Leclerc was an old friend of Monica's grandfather who had been developing an experimental device designed to draw forth energies from other universes. However, the United States government refused to fund the professor's research, believing him to be a crackpot, and so Leclerc turned to a South American dictator named Ernesto Ramirez. Unsurprisingly, Ramirez wanted to use Leclerc's device as a weapon, and so when the professor learned this, he fled. However, Ramirez hired the professor's assistant, Felipe Picardo, and continued what Leclerc started on a Roxxon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Not wishing to see his research used to cause harm, and desperate for help, Professor Leclerc came to Monica, the granddaughter of his trusted friend who also happened to be in the Harbor Patrol. Monica devised a plan, and the following morning the pair boarded a boat and set out to the oil rig where Ramirez's men were stationed with Picardo. She used her feminine wiles to trick her way onto the oil rig and get close to the evil scientist. While she attempted to slyly gleam information from Picardo, Leclerc snuck onto the platform, intending to disable the experimental machine, but accidentally tripped an alarm. Picardo deduced that the two intruders must be in cahoots, and decided to demonstrate the power of his energy weapon by targeting and destroying Fort Benning in Georgia. Acting quickly, Monica Rambeau knocked the evil doctor out of the way and began striking at his device with her bare fists as it began building energy. The machine began to yield to the woman's strikes at a critical moment, resulting in a blinding explosion. Moments later, Monica found herself transported back to the New Orleans waterfront. Dazed and confused, Monica attempted to enter one of the warehouses, looking for help but found the door locked. And then somehow, seemingly through sheer force of will, Monica transported inside the warehouse. Finding a radio, Monica attempted to send a message, not realizing the device was damaged and unplugged. However, her very touch energized the machine, sending a signal to a naval patrol. Exploring the storage warehouse further, Monica discovered racks of costumes, presumably used for Mardi Gras. Grabbing various costume pieces from the racks, Monica garbed herself in a makeshift outfit before heading back out onto the pier, where on the distant waters Monica could see the energies crackling from the Roxxon oil rig. Still not in control of her new powers, Monica wished to return, and in a brilliant beam of energy, she transported back to the oil rig in mere seconds. Rushing back down to the site of the destroyed machine, Monica found Picardo shooting and injuring the professor, as well as a hole in reality, leaking energy from another universe. Monica knocked down the evil scientist, and Leclerc explained that if the rift wasn't sealed, it would eventually grow large enough to cause the two linked universes to crash into each other, destroying both of them. Before she could figure out what to do, Monica was sucked into the hole, and her body began to absorb the energies from the other universe. As she did, she could also feel the rift closing around her. Then from inside, she saw Picardo ready his weapon, preparing to finish his old teacher. Summoning her courage and willpower, Monica Rambeau converted her body into living energy as she had subconsciously done before, and flew out, sealing the rift behind her as she caught the bullet bound for the professor and struck down Picardo. Monica and the professor then fled the oil rig before the Navy arrived, and the bewildered ramblings of Ramirez's men inspired the newspapers to dub the mysterious new hero Captain Marvel. Several days later, after examining her, Leclerc determined that Monica had gained the ability to transform her body into any form of electromagnetic energy, and even release said energy as powerful blast waves. He also provided her with a replica of her costume made from unstable molecules, and suggested that Monica was capable of doing far more good as Captain Marvel. However, Monica could feel the extra-dimensional energy inside of her building, 
and fearing she would not be able to control her power, she traveled to New York to seek help. When she arrived, she immediately caught the attention of Peter Parker, the Daily Bugle photographer who was secretly the Amazing Spider-Man. Peter saw Monica, a well-dressed, attractive woman, wandering into a rough neighborhood and decided that Spider-Man should keep an eye on her. It seems his fears weren't unfounded when a mugger grabbed Monica's purse. She pursued her attackers into a nearby alley and proved to be more than a match for the two men, even without using her powers. Spider-Man approached from behind, and Monica, thinking he was one of the muggers, instinctively blasted the hero away. Realizing she could have accidentally killed someone, Monica was more determined than ever to gain control over her power. She shredded her clothes and transformed once again into Captain Marvel and blasted off in a flash of light. Scanning the New York skyline, Monica caught sight of her destination, the Baxter Building home to Reed Richards and the world-famous Fantastic Four. However, the FF's headquarters were still in disrepair after a battle with the villainous Terex, and Mr. Fantastic himself had gone on vacation with his wife, Susan. Monica did, however, meet Benjamin Grimm, the Thing, and introduced herself as Captain Marvel. Grimm explained that she wasn't the first to use that codename, and that he suspected her deceased Kree predecessor wouldn't mind her taking up the mantle. Monica then explained that if the energy inside of her continued to build and she couldn't release it safely, she could explode and destroy the entire city. Grimm decided to contact the Avengers for advice, but wanting to talk to them herself, Captain Marvel changed into energy form and dove into the Fantastic Four's communication console, emerging in Avengers Mansion. Unfortunately, during the transfer, Captain Marvel's energy overloaded the FF's radio, the Avengers' computer, and Iron Man's armor. Spider-Man, meanwhile, continued to track Captain Marvel, learning of her potential explosive nature from Ben Grimm, and rushing off to Avengers Mansion before the Thing could explain that she wasn't a villain. Back at the mansion, although Iron Man's armor was locked up, Monica was able to explain her situation to him. Iron Man suggested that she wait in their lab's adamantium containment chamber until one of the other Avengers arrived, but before she made it there, Spider-Man swung into the the mansion and attacked. In a blusteringly bone-headed move, Spidey struck Captain Marvel and knocked her out. Fortunately, the Wasp was able to reboot Iron Man's suit, and the two Avengers arrived on the scene. Taking command of the situation, with Spider-Man's help, Iron Man was able to siphon the excess energy from Captain Marvel, using his armor as a conduit to fire it upward, saving both Monica and the city as the unstable energy exploded in the sky. Not long after that, Monica regained consciousness and the other Avengers arrived. Monica stayed with the Avengers, and after running some tests, it became apparent that the siphoning of excess dimensional energy hadn't decreased her power at all. In fact, now that she was in full control, in energy form, Monica was able to circle the globe by bouncing between satellites without damaging any sensitive equipment and return to her starting point all in less than two seconds. Having proven herself, Captain Marvel formally joined the Avengers and used their digitized files to learn more about her Kree predecessor. She later went back to New Orleans to see her parents, Maria and Frank Rambo, and revealed her dual identity. The two Rambos were incredibly proud of their daughter and supported her superhero career, and Monica eventually even led the Avengers for a time. Eventually, Monica relinquished the name Captain Marvel, giving it to Janice Vell, the son of Marvel, and took the name Photon. Ironically, Janice actually adopted the name Photon himself when he joined the Thunderbolts, causing Monica to confront him about this and change her name to Pulsar instead. Although more recently, she took up the name Spectrum just before joining up with Luke Cage's Mighty Avengers. In the end, whatever name she uses, and whether she's on the Avengers, the Ultimates, or the Next Wave Squad, Monica Rambeau remains one of Earth's mightiest heroes, and a true marvel.
Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and share it on your favorite social media. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to my various social medias for more Marvel goodness. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!